Hello, this is another one of my videos on Sheikhism, uh, this one dealing with Sheikhism after the death of said cousin Rashdi. It's based on a section of a long essay on Sheikhism in the Encyclopedia Iranica uh, by Dennis Herman. Dennis Herman is the director of the French Research Institute in Iran. He's also the author of uh, two books on Sheikhism, Kamani Sheikhism and the Ejtahad um, in English, and then another book in French on the uh, on Sheikhism in the Qajar period. Upon the death of uh, Sheikh Qazem Rashti, most of his pupils left Karbala, which had become too hostile for them, and developed Sheikhism in their homelands. Uh, they included Iranians, Arabs, and Indians. The nascent uh, Sheikhi community uh, split into two main branches. These were theologically distinct, uh, but also geographically uh, different. Uh, so they, they're called Kermani and Tabrizi because their centers were founded respectively in Kerman in the southeast of Iran and Tabriz in the northwest. Uh, other students such as uh, Mullah Hussein Gohar and Mirza Mohit Kermani also claimed uh, the right to lead the young Sheikh community in Iraq but achieved much more limited success. On the whole, it's usually the Kalmani branch, which is meant when Shirism is discussed or mentioned. It was founded by Muhammad Qanim Khan, who belonged to the Qajar royal family. Muhammad Qanim Khan, sometimes just referred to as Qanim Khan Kalmani, uh, was the eldest son uh, of uh, Ibrahim Khan Zahir al -Dawle, a nephew of uh, Fat Ali Shah, as well as a disciple of Sayyid Qasim Rashti, with whom he'd established a deep relationship during his stay in Karbala. Uh, Zahar Dale admired the theosophical position of Sheikh Ahmad Asari, but was not able to get to know him personally. Having commanded the Qajar armies in Khorasan and Gilan, Zahar Dale was made governor of the province of Karman and Baluchistan, uh, in which role he served for 22 years. Uh, from uh, 1803 up to uh, 1824. During his youth and adolescence, Muhammad Khalil Khan studied at the Ebrahamiya, a madrasa built by his father, and left for Karbala at the age of 16 or 17. He remained only a few years at the Asabas and returned to Karman as the representative of Sayyid Qasem Rashti. During this period, in 1834, he established a major library in the Abrahamia school. This institution was also where he did a major part of his teaching. Uh, Muhammad Khan Khan only went out in the company of disciples and pupils, and at the same time led an ascetic life. His doctrinal position divided Kermani society deeply. Upon his death, his body was taken to the precinct of the mausoleum of the Imam Hussein at Karbala, where he was buried. His literary output is immense. He's credited with 278 works, ranging uh, across 15 categories, including uh, Theosophy, Shi Dogmatics and Controversies, Sermons and Homilies, Oran Commentaries, Hadiths of the Imams, Principles of Law, Jurisprudence, Treatises on Prayer and Devotion, uh, Medicine, Treatises on Light, Optics and the Science of Perspective and Mirrors, Treatises on Colours, Music, Astronomy, Mathematics, the Science of the Astrolabe, Alchemy, Dream Interpretation, Geomancy, Calligraphy, Poetry and Grammar, as well as responses to various questions. His doctrinal work is especially admired for its hermeneutics of the Shi'i doctrine of the Rajal al Qaib, the men of the invisible, or the Ahl al Haq, the people of truth. Above all, he promoted faith in the hidden elite uh, or the companions of the Imam of Time in the course of the exposition of the doctrine of blocking the rabbit, the fourth pillar, which we'll talk about below. 
uh, thanks to the establishment of many agricultural lands belonging to members of his family as charitable endowments, uh, WAF, uh, Mohammed Kainu Khan was able to make the Ebrahaniya school the new spiritual center of the Karamani branch of Sheikhism, where a large number of students studied the religious sciences. These clerics, who usually returned to their homelands after studying at Karaman, developed Sheikhi circles where they spread the doctrines uh, developed by Sheikh Ahmad Asai and his successors. The establishment of WAP uh, also allowed him to finance the religious ceremonies of the community, uh, notably the Ashura commemorations uh, for the martyrdom of the Imam Hussein. A considerable number of the Sheikhis of Iraq, Bahrain, and to a lesser extent India at that time recognized the authority of Muhammad Khalim Khan and then that of his successors. Upon his death, uh, he was succeeded by one of his sons, uh, Haji Muhammad Khan Karmani. I should say I'm deviating here from uh, Herman's uh, essay because. Uh, he seems to be in the minority because uh, whilst he says uh, that um, Haji Muhammad Khan was uh, the brother uh, of Karim Khan, uh, most other sources I've read uh, say that he was the son, so I'm going with that. Um, and then after uh, Haji Muhammad Khan Karimani, another son, Sayyid al Abidin Khan, uh, followed in turn by uh, the son and grandson. Uh, Abdul Qasim Khan Ebrahami and Abu Reza Khan Ebrahami. Um, and then after the last of those uh, members of the family was assassinated in December 1979, a uh, Iraqi uh, Sheikh, Ali Musawi, uh, became the head of the order uh, for a while, uh, thus transferring the, the center from Man to Basra. The uh, Tabrizi branch was started by two clerics from Tabriz, each of whom had a group of disciples, uh, Mullah Muhammad Mamakali and uh, Haji Mirza uh, Shafi Taqatul Islam Tabrizi. Uh, Mullah Muhammad Mamakali seems to have had more disciples, but he died shortly after Sayyid Qasim Rashdi, and his son, uh, Mirza Muhammad Hussein. Uh, had not managed to attract a large number of disciples at his death. So uh, Mirza Shafi Tabrizi uh, then assumed the leadership of the Tabrizi Sheikhis. He attended the lectures of both Sheikh Ahmad Asai and Sayyid Qasim Rashti, but also those of the renowned Usuli uh, cleric uh, Sheikh Muhammad Hassan Najafi. The Tabrizi Sheikhis founded several mosques and madrasas at Tabriz under various names, and like the Ibrahimiya school in Kerman, they were all supported uh, by charitable endowments. Tabrizi Sheikhism then split into uh, several separate groups uh, driven by quarreling families. Uh, on the doctrinal level, the differences between these groups were minimal to or non-existent. Uh, during the 20th century, the Oskui family achieved considerable importance. Uh, today, the school is primarily founded, sorry, primarily found in Kuwait uh, under the name Erkari. From the doctrinal point of view, the Karamani and Tabrizi branches of Sheikhism are distinguished by two specific questions. First, the Tabrizi Sheikh is a much closer to the Asuli mainstream, recognizing appeal to Ejtahad, although it remains limited in its use. Second, they accuse Muhammad Khan Khan uh, and his successors of inventing the doctrine of Rakhna Rabbit, the fourth pillar. Uh, on the other hand, the two branches agree in their critique of Sufism and of the theosophy of the Esfahan school. Later on, after the death of Muhammad Khan in 1871, a third branch of Sheikhism emerged that's been generally overlooked by researchers. Uh, this is based in Hamadan and was founded by uh, Haji Ma uh, Muhammad Baqa Sharif Hamadani Tabatabai. Uh, he disputed the leadership of Sheikhism by Muhammad Khan as well as his interpretation 
of the doctrine of the Rukna Rabbi. Muhammad uh, Bakaya uh, seems to have challenged the authority of Muhammad Karim Khan uh, shortly before the latter's death, demanding to be officially named as the representative of the Kimani uh, Sheikhs in Hamadan, despite an earlier refusal. He resolved not to submit to the response of Muhammad Karim Khan and virtually uh, succeeded uh, from the, the Kimani Sheikhs, in spite of proclaiming himself leader of the Kimani Sheikhs of Hamadan. He stated, among other things, that the two previous successions had confirmed the fact that it was unsuccessful, sorry, that it was unacceptable for the succession to be transmitted through a family line, um, such as the Abrahamis in uh, Kerman. However, the great majority of Kermani Sheikhs ignored him and rallied to the authority of Muhammad Khan. Nevertheless, uh, Muhammad Baqa's authority was uh, recognized uh, by some of the Sheikhs in uh, Esfahan, Na'in and Hamadan, and he regularly traveled between these towns, finally settled in Hamadan in 1893-4. Uh, the eruption of violence against the Hamadani Sheikhs in 1898 forced him to leave the town, however, and seek refuge in Jantak, uh, town in Na'in, South Province. Upon his death, his body was taken to the mausoleum of Imam Reza at Mashhad. He was a prolific scholar, as so many of these other people, uh, and the author of over 150 works. So that concludes uh, this uh, account of uh, the divisions amongst the Sheikhs after Said Qasem's death. Uh, next week, we'll move on to talk about uh, later uh, Sheikh doctrine. Uh, if uh, you've been listening, thank you very much, and a particular thanks to my patrons for their kind support and encouragement. Without them, I wouldn't be able to make these videos. Please do uh, support my channel if you wish to. Uh, like, comment and share on the videos. Subscribe if you want to be notified of future videos, and I'll give Patreon and PayPal links below in case uh, you want to provide practical support. Have a good day.